Okay, what's up everyone? It's Kuroga again, back with yet another HC The Pro uh, Intermediate Efficiency game. Uh, however, this time, it's not just any HC The Pro Intermediate game, it is a world of Minesweeper record. You know, almost like being a world record, depending on how you want to look at things. But yeah, it is a 180% game, done in 51 clicks on a 49 Zini board, so it's uh, minus 2 from Zini, so pretty close, but that does mean there's a couple of places where uh, clicks could have been saved, and I can point out a couple of those, potentially. So let's uh, get right into this. This game is pretty short as well, only 50 seconds, so we're not going to have to wait through like two minutes of uh, doing nothing. So we got starting off with uh, just the corners, pretty decent start. Uh, this uh, last opening here opens up a lot of space, and pretty much the entire rest of this whole area is going to be uh, no openings, which is going to be very useful for HC to clear the rest of the board without any issues. So that was uh, pretty lucky on him that he got the openings out of the way on the first few clicks. So to start off with here, placing a flag down this bottom one here, which makes a lot of sense because if you have a look here at this two, you can see that it points to this one and the one over here. So we know these are clear. And then we also know because of this two, these are clear. So we can cut off this, 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 and this with a flag down here. So pretty well. It's not going to be an opening that you caught into on these. Because uh, this is going to be, uh, you know, next to mine. This will be next to mine. So we know that that's going to be pretty useful. Over here, pretty standard. Uh, you want to clear these two. You might as well use a cord here because if you get a one down the bottom, you can cord that as well. You know, not always going to happen, but there's no downside to going for that, so you always want to go when you have this kind of pattern here, where you have like, you know, a uh, kind of 3 by 2 kind of box. Like here, this area. Better to, you know, cord into it and hope to get lucky, which you do, you know, pretty often. And if you don't get lucky, then you just uh, deal with it. So over here, this is a pretty good place to try and go for an opening. Because you know that there's here, and here, and here empty, and so is this one and this one. So the only way for this to not be an opening, if there's a mine in one of these two squares. And then, you know, additionally, because we did not get the opening, now we know that if we get a... Uh, if we can figure out which one of these is a mine, we can, you know, flag it and then cord, and we get a big, uh, you know, big cord off that. So we'll leave that for now and move on. Doo -doo -doo. So over here we just do some clearing up some stuff. And then over here I would say is uh, a bit of a mistake here. We click for this one and then go for this one. I'm uh, not really sure what we're meant to be going for here with these clicks. But I think something much better would have been going for uh, this square here. And getting a 1 which we'll see later on that this actually was a 1. And if you'd clicked here. And flag this in quarter, it would have been uh, much better than what actually happened. So, yeah, a bit unfortunate. We've got this two here, and then we kind of get stuck. And then another thing that I think doesn't make much sense is over here. We click here, and then click here. Uh, why not just flag this and then quad this and reveal these two? You know, like we click the first one here, we get a three. I don't know in what world you'd get like a different number and not want to flag this instead. Like if you got a 2 here, you could have potentially flagged this and caught it up here as well. I don't know. A little 1 here. And then over here, um, I guess this is going for an opening because you got these two clear. So now we know, similar to the situation over here, we know that if we can find uh, which one of these three is in mine, we can call that as well, so that's another kind of like, you know, going for an opening strategy where if you don't get the opening, 
you set yourself up for like a pretty nice call later on. So it's kind of like, you know, setting up for future HC chords pretty much. And then, you know, over here, speaking of HC chords, this is probably the craziest one that we got. We know over here, this is a mine. So we click over here and then we happen to get a one here. So we flag this and then chord and we got rewarded for it because all these were, you know, just let out into, uh, you know, free squares. So that's a pretty, you know, huge chord and very lucky considering the lack of openings in here that uh, we didn't hit one and that it was full, uh, you know, full CBV. Then we go up to the top and we go for this 50-50, which is, uh, you know, pretty risky considering how far we are into this board. It's already looking pretty good. And like, we go for this 50-50 anyway. It's a pretty bold move, but you know, I respect that. Because we still have to get our, you know, bigger chords in. So I appreciate the, the boldness. So over here, we get, you know, this one and this one to chord. Uh, HC goes for chording this one first, which is something I don't really understand all that much. He ends up going for the left, left one as well anyway. Uh, I don't know why you wouldn't chord this one first, because it clears most of what this one does. This one only clears this X score as well. So I don't think there are many situations where it's better to do this and then, you know, this, then it's to start with this, because maybe this square gets cleared on with like, you know, maybe you caught something over here that clears that square. I like, I feel like it's going to be incorrect to do this way first, although most of the time it doesn't matter that much, but it is kind of strange. Then, so over here we can sit off for a bit and we end up going for a flag here. And then the reason why this flag is pretty good is because obviously you get a, you know, four for one and cord these off. And then also if you consider these two squares, if you don't put your flag here, then like, you know, the other consideration would be like maybe you flag here and cord, which looks like maybe a bit of a better cord, like in the moment. But you do want to get back to uh, these two squares. And if you say, you know, chord this, and then maybe you got a one here and chord this, that's pretty nice. But then you're left with these two squares that you'd have to just, you know, either click off or like, you know, get a useless chord on. Whereas if you place a flag here and chord, it's a way to clear these two and also make progress elsewhere. So I think that makes sense. And then, you know, we chord over this way because uh, why not? I would consider, you know, putting a flag here and then maybe cording here and then, you know, debatable whether you go here or here on your next chord. And then same thing as I pointed out up here. We have, you know, a five and then the three and we just take three and three instead of taking five. Uh, kind of strange, but... Uh, in this case, I don't think it made that much of a difference. Over here is possibly a pretty risky chord to go for that I don't think is really justified. Uh, so over here, we chord 1, 2, 3 and just clear them, which is kind of risky because there's a chance that this could have been an opening. Maybe at this point, you could have known from like mine count that there would have to be mine in here. Actually, no. Uh, possibly. No, because it's going to be left here. But yeah, the point is, uh, if there was like, you know, if these squares were empty, this would have been an opening that you just scored it into. I would have said, I would say it's better to not do that. And, uh, you know, try and hope for, you know, go for the other chords and maybe you get some more info or maybe chord into, like if there is an opening up here, maybe you chord into it somewhere else. Say for example, you have this 2-1 here, if you flag this first, which is pretty much a chord you're guaranteed to do anyway, if you chord here, and then maybe you get a 1 here and chord that, and you get into that opening, 
assuming it existed, it would be better than just, you know, going into, for no, going into it for no reason. But, you know, fortunately, uh, nothing too bad happens. And you go for this flag, pretty obvious. You get this chord, and you get this chord that I talked about earlier on, where we went for this one, and, uh, you know, kind of hoped for an H C chord later on, which is what we're getting now. And we're also, by the way, uh, getting to this chord. So at this point, the map is pretty much uh, solved. Get this one. Get 3 for 1, or 3 for 2. Saves a single click. Up here, pretty standard. Up here, you clear that. And then here, we know that this one is a mine here, because of the 1 through 1 corner. And also, you know, this and this being obviously clear. So we flag this. Get a big chord here. And then an additional chord off to the right. And now we clear this, and this, and this. And then we're back up to the top. And we can save a little bit extra by cording off that R2 correctly. One, two, three. Oop. One, two, three to save. One, two, three, four squares. So you save a single click in the end. We end up with a 180. And that is uh, the HC 180% world of Mind Super Record. Uh, you know? I'd say the biggest uh, flubs were, you know, up here, when we clicked like over here and here. See this one? Could have clicked here and gone, that would have like saved maybe a couple clicks. And then over here, uh, down here, when we clicked this and this, I don't think it end up ma ended up mattering that much, but uh, there's not really that much reason to not do a flag here in cord. And yeah, that is uh, that was the game. Thanks for watching. Bye bye everyone.